so fatigue or failure resulting from static loading. Uh, so in this example, we're gonna consider. Uh, I'm gonna remind you that the units and the example or assessment is gonna be like metric, but I'm gonna do the same one as I mentioned in the book. So there's a force F applied here at the end of this range of 15 inch. Uh, socket wrench resulting in a certain stress in the cantilevered bar O A B C as you could see it here. This bar is of A I S I 10 uh, 37 35 steel forged and heat treated so as a minimum of ASTM yield strength of 81 k pound square inch. We presume that this component would be no value after yielding which is uh, natural so the force f required to initiate yielding can be regarded as the length strength or component part we're gonna find this force okay so uh, what i want to do i'm gonna keep this powerpoint on and i'm gonna ask you to open this which is failure solution part 2 pdf uh, page 8 as a pdf file and this is problem 517 or example 2 so we're gonna find the value of F required to initiate yield the strength of the component as we see before uh, so assume uh, we're gonna assume like DC which is the part here is from here to there is very strong to break so uh, we're gonna presume that material is gonna yield which is like yield the last one the last step process so it's gonna fail okay so the material is gonna become ductile so we're gonna find the amount of force applied at point D which will cause this failure uh, so as we know that the point A is a weakest point because we have a fillet here change abrupt change in diameter of the shaft so this one is a weakest point uh, we have so we're gonna presume or assume that if any failure is gonna happen it's gonna happen here at point A okay so let's see how this is to be done um, so we know uh, for section A, which is at point A, okay, uh, we have it as cantilevered O A B C, as you see it here, and sorry, and the force F applied here, the force F applied here is similar as if it is applied here. So in a way, we're putting a huge pressure on this point. We're putting a huge pressure here on this p on the point here, which is F. So there there's gonna be a problem here, and let's see how this will happen. So we have O A B C. Whenever we size the force F, uh, the shape of this column is gonna change. So there's gonna be reduction in X uh, direction X. So that's why we have. Well, we're gonna have a strain like it's changing its direction. Well, we're, we're still elastic, it's not moving. So, a little bit of change in the direction, okay, uh, of the component because it's gonna compress, as you could see here, it's gonna compress. So, sigma x is equal uh, a moment times distance divided distance y. Okay, as you could see it here, divided by IZ, IZ, we'll come back to it in a second. So Y is the radius of the shaft, neutral axis that does not elongate or compress, because we have the upper part is elongating, the lower part will compress, it's written here. So the one in the middle stays the same, we are considering elastic, so it's barely very tiny change. Okay, so if you come back to here and we have second moment of area called second moment of inertia for a shaft is a value here pi r4 divided by 4 okay but it's all is mentioned here second moment of inertia but i showed you where did i get it from 
so as a force applied x elongate and therefore we have sigma x so it is equal moment times radius um, of the shaft to the, well the distance the neutral axis divided by the second moment of inertia we divide we subtract by r and the r value is equal to 0 0.5 and it is the one here is equal to 0 0.5 well the weakest point it is a we don't consider the largest diameter we consider the smallest diameter because the smaller diameter has more stress on it uh, so if you come back to here r equals 0 0.5 so this is equal 142.6 f and i want to remind you we need to calculate the value of f okay a twisting moment uh, why do we have a twisting so I'm gonna show you it again we have a twisting because this is pushing here so in a way as if it is rotating okay so as if it is rotating uh, so the twisting is twisting moment Newton per millimeter which is a torque okay times r which is the distance from center to stress surface in a given position or polar moment of inertia which is the one here for the shaft pi r4 divided by 2 so distance from center to stress surface in a given position and this will be equal 76.4 uh, f which we need to calculate i need to remind you we need to calculate this, this value okay uh, so if we we have two as we've seen as a previous lesson we have the uh, maximum shear stress and distortion energy as you could see it here as example so we have the maximum shear stress okay and distortion energy for ductile material so if i come back to the example and so we're gonna see how did we get this equation from uh, if you go back and you could see it because sigma y is equal to zero in this condition so i'll show it to you so if we go back to the maximum shear stress i'm gonna minimize this uh, and spare with me a second show it to you so if you go back here you find so this is the maximum shear stress we have tau maximum okay as we said later on so it's tau maximum equal sigma x divided by 2 this one is 0 plus tau xy because we have it okay is equal sigma x divided by 2 equal sy over 2 and in this case we have sy and the distortion energy we're gonna use uh, this equation sigma prime equal x minus xy plus 3xy i have to remind you this is zero so we have sigma x square plus 3 uh, tau xy square is equal to sy so if we go back to page nine okay so as you've seen before so the first one is equal to sy as it is go back to the distortion energy and in this one is equal to uh, sy divided by 2m so we get the value i need to just to add one point this will be 388 okay so this is a force f for the people who say why the value of f is different than the value of distortion energy because this is more conservative okay because this is more conservative so i need to remind you of one thing i need to remind you of one thing we have uh, we calculated the failure under static load and um, in our example we had uh, like a socket range we uh, pushing downward with the force f so the force f will be will be like a magnitude pushing downward here and rotating this one in this direction ok 
okay so 